So I had an opportunity to grab the mic, so I thought I'd take advantage of it. <laughs> Sorry, we, we just had actually Tuesday and Wednesday of this week the first meeting of the Clinical Sigma Sin Exploratory Research uh, Consortium. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it real quick. But, but we just met Tuesday and Wednesday at a very exciting meeting. We met with the Return of Results Consortium, which consists of the, the LC programs and the clinical sequencing program, plus a number of uh, R01s and R21 grants from our, our um, uh, LC group. Um, and obviously, we talk a lot, a lot, a lot about a lot of the same issues that are being discussed here. Um, and just, I'm going to steal one of, one of uh, Eric's slides and just comment, I've got the mic. Um, the, uh, the week before, a week ago today, I was at the TCGA steering committee, the Cancer Genome Atlas Steering Committee meeting, which is another one of my jobs. And um, I just have to comment, we have, this is, of course, the, the large comprehensive analysis of cancer genomes. And that group has uh, three papers in press or uh, under review right now and will put out another five tumor projects probably by the end of this year. So in the understanding the biology of genome, mostly understanding the biology of disease area, we're still doing lots of work and building the foundations from which the data can be translated to uh, the clinic, we hope. But now uh, on the clinical sequencing pro program uh, is really in the advancing uh, the science of medicine, and um, as uh, Dan and Terry mentioned, uh, we have this, th we've reissued the RFA. We had a very strong response to this RFA that was out a year and a half ago. And these are, this is a call for, for uh, multidisciplinary teams that are really looking at the issues around bringing sequencing uh, into the clinical workflow. So the, each, each application requires three components. One, a generation application of, gen, of uh, first a clinical pro project uh, to drive uh, everything that follows. Uh, we require a clinician to be a PI in, in the program. Um, project two is the, is the translation, the sequencing and interpretation and reporting to the physician and patient uh, of the sequencing data the variants they're, they're associated. And then a very important uh, uh, LC component, Project 3, examining the ethical and psychosocial implications of bringing broad genomic data into the clinic. Um, variant discovery is actually secondary. We, we say that to, uh, to point out that the real aim of this program is to, to understand some of the mechanisms involved in bringing <laughs> broad genomics into the clinic. Um, so this RFA is, has just been reissued a few weeks ago, HG12009, uh, uh, with due date, uh, application uh, due date of um, July 26th. And just to say, we, we have funded six, we've made six awards from the first RFA. Uh, half are, are involved in cancer genomics and half in more complex disease or, or a, a very variety of diseases. And the ones that were successful in this RFA were those that really built very strong projects in all three areas. Um, you know, the ones that, that didn't take uh, some of the psychosocial implications, the ELC issues, as uh, seriously uh, didn't do as well. This really requires that multidisciplinary effort. Um, there's also a coordination center. I won't go into too much, similar to what Terry described for the genomic medicine pr projects. And these are her slides. And then just real quick, I know a number of you have U01 uh, awards from either NHGRI or, or other NIH institutes. Uh, many NIH institutes are participating in this. This is an announcement that just came out recently from the Office of the Director. Uh, they have uh, funds uh, in bioethics uh, at NIH, and they're seeking uh, Supplement, basically competitive supplements uh, to ongoing UO1s that are involved in research related to protection of human subjects. Um, and they're looking for particular uh, ideas, projects in two areas. There he is. Um, one, the effectiveness of current human subjects' protections and the development of tools and methods to examine evolving evidence-based approach to improve human subjects' protections. 
and also the feasibility, cost benefits, and impacts of requiring consent for research on de-identified human specimens and data using novel models of consent. Um, this is a very fast timeline. These, the ones that come to NHGRI will go to a special meeting of our council this summer for awards uh, before the end of this fiscal year. So awards in September. The uh, application receipt date is May 25th, so uh, pretty quick. And this, you have to have a, a current U01 uh, to apply for these supplements. Okay. Any questions? I'll sit down. 